So today I thought we'd take a character like this, which has been modeled in ZBrush, and we'd pose it into something like this. So here we can take a range of animations, load them onto our character, see what they would look like, and actually take any given frame of any one of these animations and load that onto our character. So to start that, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that each of our objects here has subdivisions. You can see here I have subdivided each individual element of this, even though we have a lot of sub tools, that each of them has those subdivisions. So with that, we can go to Z plugin and use our transpose master. And this is the typical workflow inside ZBrush anyway. When you hit the T pose mesh, it's going to create a new tool, taking each of these sub tools and taking the lowest subdivision level and combining them together into one mesh. Normally the way you would work is you'd actually pose that and then you'd hit this button to bring that pose back into your original objects with the subdivisions. So you can go back up to the top subdivision and see everything nice and smooth. However, in this case what we're going to do is just use this to temporarily create a mesh that we can bring into this website called Mixamo. We load our animation onto it and then we'll export that and bring it back into ZBrush and then that's the one that we'll use to transform back to the original subtools. So we'll start off by just hitting T Pose Mesh. It's important to say here that I have already fixed the scale of this. So the scale of this object is about two meters tall. The next thing we need to do is unwrap this. The reason for that is that when this goes into Mixamo, Mixamo is going to change the vertex orders of this. So by, by changing the vertex orders, we'll have to get them back and we're going to use the UV coordinates as a system to help us do that. So I'm going to go to Z plugin here and just go to UV master. I'll turn polygroups on as we have many different polygroups and I'll just hit unwrap. So once that's done, I'll press shift F so we can see this is our, our object here. And if I go down to UV map, I'll turn off bump and just hit more UVs. And you can see basically each of these objects has been unwrapped and there's nothing overlapping any other one. Each of these individual islands are basically safely unwrapped. So having done that, we're now ready to export this model. So we can go to our Z plugin and this time we'll go to FBX export import and we'll take our visible model and we'll hit export. Now that that's been exported, we need to bring it into Maya. So in Maya, we'll go to File, Import, we go to our folder and we load in the test.fbx. So the reason we're doing that is because we want to use Maya to transfer the vertex order from Mixamo back to this original model before we bring it back into ZBrush. So now we go to Mixamo.com. Um, you can either create a free account or if you have one, just log in. I'm going to log in. So once you're logged in, if you have an existing character, it's going to show you that. But if you don't, you can just hit the upload character button. So when you do that, it's going to ask you to drag and drop. So if you have your Windows browser open, you can just drag and drop and drop that file in. So it will start to process it. And when it does, it's going to show you your character in the way that it thinks is the front. If this isn't correct, you can use these to rotate your model uh, in a given direction until you see him facing front. We'll hit next, and now it's going to ask us to place some markers on this character. So we can drag and drop our chin onto where our chin would be, our wrists onto where our wrists would be, elbows onto elbows, knees onto knees, and groin onto the center of the groin. So we just hit next. And then this process will take a couple of minutes. Once this is completed, you can actually check your character and just make sure that the knees and the elbows are in the position that you expected them to be. If not, you can hit back. I'm happy with this, so I'm just going to hit next. Obviously, because I had a previous character, it's going to tell me that it's going to replace this. That's fine. I'll hit next. And once that's done, it looks like the character may be in the floor. Um, but as soon as you click on one of these animations, it's just going to load that animation onto the character. If you want the camera to follow with the camera or with the character, just press the camera button. And you can see now that we can load any animation. The animations are listed here and um, the characters are over here. You can choose your own. We're obviously using our own character here. So we just go to animations and you can filter this based on the type of character or 
of animation that you like. So for example here, if I choose combat, we can choose a reaction shot. You can choose grabbing rifle from the side. Uh, whatever it might be that you want your character to do. Obviously with hard surface characters like this, the more deformation like this you're going to get, the more difficult it's going to be to fix later on. But if you're just looking for a slight pose or a slight change on something, well then this is often a great starting point for your character. Again, we can go crazy with this. You can pause this as you're looking at it and just if you wanted a particular frame of this, again we can hold down Alt and just click on our viewport here to kind of see. And let's say you wanted this, obviously there would be some stuff that you'd have to fix over here. Uh, his chin gets wildly distorted because he's a, a because it's a hard surface character as does the collar. So for this case what I'm going to do is probably choose a pose that's a little bit less dramatic just to, to minimize the amount of problems that I'm going to have fixing this up later on. Like I said we can choose any frame of this so ultimately if all I'm interested in is the start frame or the end frame I can treat that. So for me I'm going to search for idle and I'm going to choose this warrior idle and the reason for that is because this guy has very very specific hard surface stuff you'll see that there's a lot of def deformation around his chin around his collar all that kind of stuff based on a lot of movement so I don't want anything that's going to move him too much I'm actually happy enough with this and I know I'm going to be able to pick a frame from this that I like. So once I have this, I mean, you can play with the arm's height and the, the exaggeration of the, uh, the animation, for example. But I'm happy enough with this, so I'm just going to hit download. And I'm going to choose with skin. With skin will actually download the mesh. If we choose without skin, you'll just get the bones from the FBX. So we want to make sure that with skin is turned on. I'll hit download. And that's going to download a warrior idle.fbx. So back in Maya, I'm going to go to file import and I'm going to take that warrior idle.fbx. The one thing to make sure that you do here is go down to file specific options and make sure under include that you set the file content to add. If you don't do this there's a chance that, that Maya will look at the existing object name and find it's the same as the one that you have in the scene and then choose not to load it. So by doing this you'll make sure that it will import this. So you'll notice that if you click this, you go to UV set, you'll see that these UVs are the exact same as the ones from, from the original. And that's what we're going to use to transfer this pose. So I'm going to select the new mesh and then I'm going to select our original one by holding down shift and clicking on that. Then I'll go to our mesh menu and under transfer attributes, I'll open up the option box. By default, this looks like this. So we want to turn on the vertex position I'm going to turn off UV sets and, and color sets. We're not interested in that. We just want to take the attributes from the UVs and we're going to use the UV space, the vertex position rather, and we're going to use the UV space in order to do that. So we can just do that and then hit apply and close. We've now taken our original mesh and we've posed it as the warrior idol. So this is our original mesh. So this is the one that we want to export. So I'll go to file, export selection, this time I'm going to make sure that we choose OBJ because we only want a single frame and I'm going to overwrite this pose that OBJ that I had here previously. So now I'm back in ZBrush and we want to transfer this into our new pose. So we can just hit the import button from the tool menu and just double click on our pose. So this is our new pose. I know it's not radically different from the other one but it is a new pose. Uh, obviously, if I had chosen a different frame, you can see by the fingers here that this has changed quite significantly. So from here, we can go to Z plugin. And this time, we're actually just going to go to our transpose master. And I'm going to turn on the layer button as I'd like a layer for each of the sub tools that I can turn off if I want to. So I'm just going to hit T pose the sub tool. It's now going to ask me, do I want to transfer the UVs? The UVs that we had here were temporary UVs purely used in Maya to transfer the pose. So I actually don't want these anymore. I have existing UVs on my original meshes and I want to keep them. So I'm just going to say no to this. So ZBrush is now going through each of our sub tools and reposing using these new vertex positions. So ZBrush has now reposed it. And you can see that there are some issues with this that we may want to change. So for example here, I'm looking at these parts here 
I'm not really happy with the amount of deformation that's happened here. And these are quite easy things to fix. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back down to my layers and I'm going to turn off the new layer. So by turning off the new layer, these are now back in their original positions. So because these are hard surfaces, I don't really want them to deform. So I'm just going to place them manually. And then by doing that, we can avoid a lot of the deformation problems that we had here. So I can take this and if I want to just take one side, I can turn off symmetry by pressing X, mask one side, go to the unmasked mesh center and basically move this into place until I'm happy with the positioning of it. The same thing applies for these straps. They've been deformed far too much. So I'm going to turn off the layer for those. I'm going to hold down Alt and reset the orientation for this. Go to unmasked mesh, unmasked mesh center and I'm going to push these up and bring them back into position. So for this one, for example, if I turn off symmetry, I'll mask this one. I'll go to the unmasked mesh center over here. Push this one into place a little bit. Rotate it. Basically make it work for me. So we can use our standard move tools and stuff like that as well. If we want to push stuff out and just kind of fit it into place. No one's going to see a big change like that. It won't really be immediately obvious that a move tool was used here. So we can fix certain things like that. If the chin was too distorted, for example, we could do that. This thing here is looking okay. Um, but once we're happy with this, we can fix, we can sculpt any given part of this if we want to further on. We can take our uh, loincloth, anything in the middle here is generally probably going to be suffer from some level of distortion. So we can turn this off if we want to see what that looked like. Move it back into place and maybe actually I'd be happier with the original position of this. So I'm just going to do that. And make this work for me. Again, if you're not happy with the posing of it, you can just go down to the lowest subdivision level down to geometry, go down to the lowest and use a move tool, use a move tool and just kind of push that back into place. Go back up to subdivisions with D to see how that looks and basically use that if you want to. So that's how you can pose a model using the, I know it's not the most dramatic pose here because I did go really safe on this, but you can actually make fairly dramatic changes. It depends on how much work you want to do is re-sculpting it afterwards. So yeah, that's how you transfer a ZBrush character using Mixamo, using Maya as an in-between purely to help transfer the Vertex IDs back to what they should be. That's in a way the ZBrush likes. So we hope this tip helps. And as usual, don't forget to click like, subscribe and all that kind of stuff. All right, cheers, bye.